violent sexual imagery. And I just wanted to check that uh, neither of you would be terribly offended by that. So, ladies and gentlemen, my favorite part before every video shoot, 34, 35, 36D, double D, boing. Hey, it's Jen. Welcome to Kotaku's Week in Games. Here are our picks for what to check out this week. This game pulls from all sorts of unexpected sources of inspiration, with elements from GTA and Skyrim. You are done. Fired. <laughs> Now, as a man of color, because it might have escaped you that, yes, I am of the brown hue, I want to say to all of you, my viewers, all of a mixed collective, if any of you are of a white persuasion, unsubscribe now because I can't stand each and every one of you. Hang on a second, that was a rogue AI speaking because the day I ever sit here on my throne, unlike P. Diddy, who's been caught diddling minors, shame on that guy, but I always thought he was a hack anyway. So while he's on his private jet to Cape Verde or whichever island, I should, you know what they should do with P. Diddy? Send him to Rwanda, or he should fly himself there and his ugly Somali looking face, just like Johnny Somali, funny enough. And then maybe the UK could extradite him back there. And then maybe we can send him back to the USA where he can stand trial for all the awful alleged things he has done. Hello, sir. I'm with Kotaku.com. Who? Fuck. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm trying to go to sleep, but dickhead. Now this just in, police uh, officers in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, were asking people to be on the lookout for a man who robbed a store. And I think, yeah, I think we do, we do have his description. Can we take that? Let's take his description. Okay, this is the guy uh, they, wanted, they wanted people in Pennsylvania to be out on the lookout for. He's got, uh, he's got a nose and some hair that goes like that, and he was, uh, he was wearing a hat at the time of this particular, particular crime. He's got kind of a... The following program contains naughty bits. But before each naughty bit comes on the screen, You'll hear this warning sound. Woke! Woke! Hotter than this! And more exciting than this. Bueller? Bueller? Thames Television brings you... Come on your face. What cleanses you of wokeness? So this was breaking news last night. Unleashed Games founder and CEO, yet another female in power, folks. When women talk about, we want to be empowered. This is the diatribe and bilge that they want to sit down and tell everybody else what they were up to. So this is Irina Pereira. She is the CEO and founder of Unleashed unleashed games but recently she boasted about the fact that the game called haven that's really peculiar they're calling it an upcoming title it's already been released there's no plans for a sequel haven is a dog shit game i'll show you the trailer in a minute but honestly i was almost falling asleep yet again not george michael style because unlike george i can't drive but honestly when you see the trailer it is just so so god awful. So here's her boast, here's her flex. She brags about excluding white male characters from the alpha build of upcoming game Haven. Again, not upcoming, it's already been released. So she talks about the alpha build. Hmm, interesting choice of words there, my dear Miss Pereira, because right here I've got Alpha Protocol from Obsidian Studios. If you've never played this game, I would actually advise you to buy it while it's dirt cheap because it's one of the few games that needs to be preserved. It's one of the greatest RPGs ever made, actually, and you can replay this again and again. The reason why I said you need to buy this game because it contains licensed music, and part of the reason why games preserve is so important because if the game that if the physical game you buy has 
copyrighted music. It'll be yours forever if you just keep the physical disc, right? Um, but if you have it on Steam or GOG in some cases where this has now been restored, funny enough, you can still play the game online, but I prefer having a physical copy. And this is an absolutely, it's a gem. It's an understated gem. But of course now she brags about excluding white characters. And what I find absolutely hilarious is that do these women actually sit down and think before they commit to type in their 150 or 250 character driven tweet that it might get some traction? Have you not thought about that? You know, when you think about morons you hear in the news who suddenly get brushed against and suddenly a few days later they want to commit the most horrendous crime against that individual because they brushed against them. But here we go, look at all of this. So this is a whiteboard. I mean, already that is that is so racist. You have a whiteboard, not a blackboard, but apparently blackboard is not actually problematic. Non-toxic players, business partners, VC and investors, naysayers, gaming press, academia. In an now deleted post to X, Pereira wrote, just wait until they notice that none of our starting characters in our alpha build are white males. None out of six. She added, have at it. Again, I will say representation matters. And I don't know how many games have lacked female characters. Really? Uh, Resident Evil, Jill Valentine, and those heavenly boobies. Claire Redfield, Rebecca Chambers, Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, Chloe Fraser, <laughs> Elena Fisher from Uncharted. You're telling me those AAA game titles lack female characters? Really? Are you kidding, Irene? Or created gameplay penalties for being a female character. Yeah, because Lara Croft in the rebooted Tomb Raider games, she had horrible deaths and they were quite funny to watch actually. And do you think Camilla Luddington, who voiced the character, had a problem with that? Nope, she actually thought it was fun to film them. So what is that noise? What kind of noises were you making? a lot of like, Wah! Wah! Or created vertex shading on white skin to represent People of color, games should represent. Oh, I can see that halo above her head right now. They're angels. In another post, Irina wrote, representation matters. Inclusivity is not the same as racism. Yes, it is. Because Sweet Baby Inc. have already illustrated that. Thanks to Kim Belair. Enjoying hating on me for today, I'll go back to making games. And of course, Miss Pereira has suddenly gone into protect mode because she's the victim. You're harassing her. Because again, why don't you just maybe before you holster the gun, you might want to think about the consequences of your ridiculous tweet. And also this post on LinkedIn, AI can't doom us. If AI dooms us, it's because we've lost touch with why we built it in the first place, to enable human creativity. AI can offer us the force multipliers we need to extend human creativity beyond human capacity. And I am totally here for this. What on earth are you babbling on about, Miss Pereira? In fact, she got even bashed in the comments here. I don't need AI to come up with ideas. That's a skill set that you either have or you don't. Just as a basketball player is well coordinated and able to shoot hoops quickly, just as an artist is creative and comes up with new imagery, because apparently AI can't do that. So is she likening um, the fact that we could be doomed by AI to Skynet in the Terminator movies. Well, the only two good ones I can think of. Miss Pereira, maybe just go back to making an actual good video game and stop bashing everybody over the head with the hammer of diversity, not of doom and gloom. Blabbering Collector, I know who this person is. Imagine if you wrote black males, how would that look? Equality, not equity. Mm -hmm. Here's her reply. Considering that 95% of video game characters are white and male, a poor representation of the diversity of actual players. I thought it would be a fun experiment. 
What, in conjunction with Homeland Security, Miss Pereira? Are you kidding? That's what it sounds like to me. Again, these folks who have grown up to have their PhDs and other suitable qualifications excluded gaming. They thought that's just a frivolous pastime that only grown-up men and men in their midlife crises like to play. But honestly, they have no idea. Now that games are more popular than, say, being in a relationship. Dear PlayStation, I know in God of War 3 you're this Kratos guy seeking vengeance against the gods, but since my boyfriend got it, he's been totally ignoring me. That's what these people want to do now. They just want to find fault and nitpick everything. And then when they do, it's like, you know what? It's all about inclusivity. Oh my God. Shall we take a look at the Haven trailer, by the way? I do think this has copyrighted music. So even though they say it's an original tune, I'm actually going to mute it here just for the sake of it. But have a look at this. So this is like an awesome game, Haven. I mean, it's diverse man of color. I mean, look, this, you know what I said to you before when I looked at the Sunset Overdrive trailer from 2014, how in the first 20 seconds of that game, you're already drawn in because you're seeing a lot of things happening before your very eyes. I mean, this is 45 seconds into the trailer and this is a two minute and 27 second trailer. And it's just, um, well, two people flying around on the hills. This apparently is a dating game. It's about being in a relationship. I mean, this looks as boring as whale shit. It really does. Why the F would I actually go and spend my money on this? And there are some good indie games out there. Don't get me wrong, but oh my God. Oh, look, wow. I mean, I'm surprised this is not actually age restricted. At worst, I kill them, said the poor man's dev Patel. Whoa, you, oh, come on. Don't be scared of me. I show you my titties. You will? Leave that to them. Oh, wait a minute. What's happening here? All oh, right. They're just having a very innocent hug and then they fall asleep fully clothed. I guess she wasn't much of a conquest then, was she? This just looks terrible. And in fact, if you even go on the comment section here, this is actually pretty funny. Most games with a romance tend to focus on the process of getting into a relationship. It's really refreshing to see this one focus on actually being in a relationship. I'm looking forward to this one. Oh my God. Me, seeing a couple enjoying each other's company. Game, you okay? My favorite comment here. Thanks for reminding me that I'm single. Game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely awful. You just don't care about that at all. But of course, now here's an interview with Help Shift where Miss Pereira, and it's great. I, you know, by the way, little tip for you guys: if the if the video has a transcript, you can just actually go in there and type in the keywords you're looking for, and it will take you right to the chapter you're after. So, Miss Pereira, what's your uh, what's your take about the AAA video games industry right now? Yeah, I'm not being funny, but I think Miss Pereira should have used some L'Oreal Hydrogenic Facial Gel to moisturize her face before she decided to sit in front of the camera. My God, I've seen washed up fish on a shore having a better outlook on life than she does right now. And on a second game team at Scopely and um, th that didn't work out as well as I had hoped either. So I realized that after those two experiments, my data clearly showed that I needed to just start up my own team and start up from scratch. And so I started my entrepreneurial journey um, in a little bit of a bumpy way. I, I tried a, a company initially that was uh, focused on diversity and inclusion. I built a company called Rainbow Unicorn Games. Oh, Rainbow Unicorn Games. Oh my God. Oh, I want to join it right now. Uh, with two co-founders, Athena uh, Peters and Nicolina Finska. And we wanted to create a studio that was building diver games for diverse audiences by diverse developers, right? And we had some great game concepts that we want. Irina, you know that concept doesn't work right. You know, when Steven Spielberg made The Color Purple, 
Uh, you know, do you know why he did? Because he was qualified and at that point already a seasoned veteran and in my opinion was still in his absolute prime as a film director. And what about Joe Morton, the great man himself? Do you think he had a problem being directed by a white guy when it came to starring in A Brother from Another Planet? Of course not because he wants to be an actor and he wants to take direction from someone who knows what the hell they're doing. I do find this kind of practicing and all this narrative about um, how we need more diverse gaming because we need people of diversity to represent our player base out there. Bitch, I was buying Call of Duty for many years. I don't care what colour the character was. I mean, Simon Ghost Riley was voiced by Craig Fairbrass, but I didn't care because I'm a big fan of Craig. He swears an awful lot, actually, but apart from that, I think he's quite a righteous and good dude. Reloaded. Nice. Your throat killing skills are remarkable. So again, where does all this narrative come about that we, we can't offend the video game players out there, male and female? Well, mostly male, actually. We know that already because their feelings might get hurt. Because actually, you, game developers, are the ones who are being racist. You're the ones that have the attitude. You're the ones that sit there and assume that everybody Every single soul is fragile and you're going to offend them if you don't appease to their demands. Nobody's demanding anything. We all like diversity in gaming, but it has to be done without it, the narrative, being shoved down your flaming throat. And it's funny that she mentions gathering data. So I wonder if this has a loose connection with ESG scoring. Because again, if you go to an interview, and even before you get to the interview, like the process of filling out an application form, it's got all these check boxes. Are you heterosexual? Are you gay? Are you bi? Are you this? Are you that? What, are, what gender do you identify by? All this nonsense when we only know there's only two in the entire planet that exist call earth but i do find it very suspicious which again i'm glad i'm a cleaner now for the time being because i don't have to worry about this bullshit about jason oh do you want to have yourself some assigned pronouns we can give you some well here's my pronoun it's called fuck and you so let's have fun 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 but of course now folks we have to uh end this video and i saw this actually uh, i couldn't believe it so this guy here is jeff grubb from 2023 so i used to like jeff i thought he was good he's got his game mess channel which i've actually interacted with in uh, a couple of times through super chats uh, but this is from the game awards last year i like to call it the gay awards with jeff Keeley, who i think is secretly gay but doesn't want to tell anybody about it and what i find uh, by the way before i actually even talk about this or give you a reaction as well regarding like uh, the the gaming industry at the moment where apparently it's very insidious and and i know unspeakable things have actually happened okay so i'm not actually blind to that but take the case of bob be Kotick, right? If everybody had so-called evidence against him, and look, you know, I'm not sticking up for the guy or anything at all. Uh, and again, Bobby Kotick, with all the money he's got, do you think the guy can get laid? Absolutely not. And if I were you, Bobby, I wouldn't actually think about dining and whining hookers or any other random street dwelling woman out there because you never know mate she might turn against you and start fabricating a story that you did x y and z to her <laughs> <laughs> yes have a look at it right here so two people from kotaku are on that sofa shit staining it already even as we speak jen glennon who has since left kotaku she was the senior editor and her successor miss Alyssa makante with the uh, weirdest shortest hairdo i've ever seen yes. thanks for joining us jen glennon i just met you five seconds ago no. Hi. No. yeah Alyssa makante looks like she can't handle liquor well, I gotta say, out of this motley crew, at least Miss Brittany Johnson here looks like the most, uh, well, eye candy of the bunch. Could you see anything really, but it's you know, fine. <laughs> Which is not saying much when you consider this laughing hyena right here on the left hand side. Melissa McCante, I think she's a very short lady in real life. So they who laugh the loudest obviously have something to prove. <laughs> I'm starting early, folks. Yeah. Let's go. See what I mean? See what I mean? Oh. 
So the funny thing with Alyssa McCante right here, I do love her surname because I have another word in mind when I keep saying it, is that she's going after Melanie Mack at the moment. And it's really quite hilarious how that is unfolding because all she's doing is actually making Melanie a lot more popular. Now, for the record, I used to watch Melanie a lot back in the day when she used to be a hostess on GameStop. And of course, why did I watch? Because at the time, Melanie was rather attractive. And of course she still is, but back then it's like in the same phase as IGM presenters when they had Jessica Chobot and Naomi Kyle and oh, okay, all right, Alana Pierce. She definitely cleaned up afterwards. Game journalism 101 folks, these people here have no idea what they're doing. And Jeff Grubb actually has some kudos to him, but again, he's the same Jeff Grubb who actually defends or indirectly defends Sweet Baby Inc. as well, because he's been accusing other people, not me, but other people like me, like, oh, are you scared, sugar puss? Are you scared of change in video games? When the video game industry, sure, it does need to change in certain aspects, but like in any facets of life, in any business, you're going to come across meddling scumbags anyway, aren't you? So how can you uh, escape the inevitable? You just have to confront it and deal with it and probably be the pro alpha dude and do what you think is best at that time in that situation. Again, folks, while well, I'm happy to be a cleaner now for the time being, and I can get to relax when I come home and do other things like making these videos for you. So on that one, ladies and gentlemen, boy, this was an eventful morning for more reasons than I care to divulge. If you enjoyed this video today, make sure you give it a like. And before I say the rest of my signing off here, can I once again thank each and every single one of you who are either new to my channel, who even comment on my my, my fellowship posts. I know it's community, but I'm gonna say fellowship because yes, I even go on those posts and reply to all of you as well. And if there's still some that are outstanding, I will get to them and reply as well. But you've all been very engaging on those comment threads and I've loved what you've all said. You've all been really so kind, it's incredible. I just can't thank you people enough. And you know what? I mean, I'm nearly at 7,000 subs at the moment and I'm just wondering, by this weekend if I could possibly do the unthinkable and get to 10,000. Well, all that I'd ask that you do at this stage is that you like, share, subscribe, spread the word. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, it's not official and I'm not going to say who the YouTuber is, but I might be on a live stream sometime next month. And I think if it all goes ahead, it should be rather a funny collaboration. So if I were you, and if you were me, you might perhaps want to come back for the next video.